Are the Milwaukee Bucks even a threat to the Celtics anymore? That plus eye-popping numbers about Celtics three-pointers and why I hope Jason Tatum does not play against the Atlanta Hawks right now on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Thanks to Blockbuster Brand, it's holiday season, drop Drew in the mix. And three from KT, no, we not on the Knicks. Flushing competition like Al on Giannis. Juice and Big Zeus still being town's finest. Been a great team going up in the rappers. Watch the Steve Jane in locked on after. Corrales on the breakdown. Clutch like a tip from Dean White on the breakdown. John on the mic, document and domination. Matter pen of back, they is all seas nation. Rain and Jace, how we started raising business, how we finished. Locked on. Celtics pod, home of the winners. Hey there, welcome back to the Locked On Celtics podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day and I got you covered every Monday through Friday. Bonus podcasts when they play in the weekends like this weekend, they play the Raptors on Saturday. So I will do a podcast after that game so you got something to listen to on Sunday. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. Watch the show on YouTube, get into the comment section, have some fun there talking about the Celtics, talking about whatever it is that we're talking about here on the podcast. I'm John Corrales. I've been covering the Celtics for about 20 years now, doing it as a beat writer for Boston Sports Journal and the author of Built Different, one of two books available on johncorrales.com that I've written. Uh, I'm not just putting a random book up there. I've written both of these books that are available. Built Different celebrates Banner 18. Uh, Buy it at johncorrales.com. $30 personalized sign gets to your door in the United States. $30, not a bad deal. Uh, international shipping, we can talk. Email me. We'll have to figure something else out. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Start the season with a big return. New customers, you get a f- $150 in bonus bets. If you win your first $5 bet, visit FanDuel.com to get started. Later on, we'll talk about Jason Tatum, the Atlanta Hawks, and why I hope he does not play, and I hope the league asks about it. In the second segment, we'll talk about uh, the Celtics three-pointers, some in- an, inter- an interesting stat that explains all of the three-pointers. We're going to start with the Milwaukee Bucks, and we're going to start it with our boy, Tom Westerholm, who on Broadway might be known more as uh, his, his Broadway stage name, Sweeney Tom, who uh, has is you know kills people with his takes. And then uh, they turn around, unmute yourself, man. Unmute yourself. I'm back. I'm back with the puns. This, I'm going Broadway with it. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm known for my acting. I'm known for my, for, for my killer, uh, killer yeah. takes, killer takes. I'm known yeah. for I'm sharp. Sweeney Todd was the killer barber. You are the killer podcaster. Yeah. And, uh, I think they got like, there's cannibalism involved here, which, you know, takes it to a whole new level, but <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about it off air for sure. Sure. Yeah. 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 That's the problem. Uh, in today's climate, I'm sure it's fine. So, okay. Uh, Milwaukee bucks. Uh, I put bucks leftovers there. I don't know if there's anything from the game that you can take, but I think my biggest takeaway looking back on it, they, this is their team. There's, they, they had a couple guys missing. They had a couple guys missing, but like the Celtics obviously missing Kristaps Porzingis Jalen Brown just coming back from a a, a week plus off. That's not a team that I look at and say, oh yeah, I'm worried about them when it comes to facing the Celtics. If, I mean, I'm not going to say if they match up in the playoffs, the Bucs, I'm not even sure they're going to make the playoffs at this point, (laughs) but if they do match up, I'm like, oh yeah, just, just do what you've been doing. Like, what's the answer for putting Damian Lillard in every action all the time and benefiting off of that. Do they have an answer? They don't. No, I I mean, I think the, 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 I mean, the most telling, right? Like the, the, the absolute microcosm of that entire game was the possession where Tatum and, and Derek white run the, you know, the pick and roll so that, so that they get the switch white's got uh, uh, Lillard's on Tatum Giannis is panicking and is like, you know, kind of shading over, shading over, turns his back entirely on White to go try to double up Tatum. And it's a three for Derek White. And it like, I think it put the Celtics up by like three or something like that at that point. Like, you know, it was a big shot, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, that's that's it. It's like, yeah, the, the Bucks have to worry every time Lillard gets stuck on anybody on the Celtics. And that's the Celtics, that, that's one of the Celtics many, they have a lot of secret sauces. That's one of their many secret sauces this season is that if you have anybody out there who is targetable 
the Celtics at any given time can have five guys on the floor who can target that guy and just punish him over and over and over again. And that's like, I, I don't, if you're Milwaukee, I don't know what you do about that other than just say, Hey, Giannis, um, you know, go win us a game and he can do that. Right. Like no question. Um, but he didn't do it yesterday. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I, I think my grand takeaway from that game was truly just like, what a catastrophe that trade was for mm. them. Not just from a, not, not just because Lillard is, you know, on that kind of side of his career, not just because they really missed Drew Holiday, but also because, I mean, their chief rival in the Eastern Conference got this month. You just, he just put him there. Like yeah. we've talked about that a million times, but it's just so stark when it's, when it's happening in a game of like, like Holiday's awesome, just awesome still at everything. And Lillard is just not what they need. Chris Middleton is going to come back at some point. Yeah. But if he's not the Chris Middleton from the championship season, if he's anything less and he has been less, I don't know if he's ever going to be right again. If he can't play, if he can't be himself, they're screwed. There's just nothing. Done. They, they, they're they done. Because you went from a backcourt of Lillard, I mean, um, Holiday and Middleton to Lillard and whatever hodgepodge you're trying to put next to him. And like losing Gary Trent is a problem for you. That shouldn't be that big of an issue for the Milwaukee Bucks. So yeah, that, that whole thing, Coupled with the, the Middleton injury, the Bucks are so done. I, you look at it's so funny. Someone on Celtics Reddit posted a screenshot of the standings. And <laughs> the did you see this? That was good. Yeah. You have to at the bottom of the screenshot, you have to accept the cookies, the NBA cookies. Yeah. To see the bottom of the, the standings and see where the Sixers and the Bucks are right now because they're both two they both have two wins people are like the patriots have more wins in 10 weeks than the bucks and the sixers do which is insane to say correctly like that is incredible now maybe maybe the sixers i like look at the sixers and say all right they, they've they still they're gonna get Embiid back yeah, maxi's yeah. gonna come back at some point yeah they at least have the at some point, all three of our guys will be fairly healthy, even though Embiid's going to miss back to backs in here or there. You can at least stabilize. You can yeah. you can feel like pulling back on the yoke, and like that plane is going to come up at some point. And you just got to hope that you can it, before it hits the ground. The Bucks, they're pulling. I don't know if there's I don't know if there's anything that's going to sta stabilize that plane outside of Chris Middleton somehow coming back and being prime Chris Middleton. And he's been out for so long that I don't see that happening at all. So it, it really, I mean, it just, yeah, it speaks to the mess defensively that Damian Lillard creates, right? Because yes. like we saw yesterday, how good, how great Giannis still is, you know, like he's, yes. he's still, 100% certified that guy, you know, like, like yeah. he's, he's, he's awesome. And, uh, and it just, you know, aside from that early flurry, the Celtics were the better team for most of that game. And it's, I mean, I, you know, I don't, I mean, <laughs> we can just keep, I guess, hitting the, hitting the bucks with a hammer until, oh. but realistically too, you, I mean, it, not only is this their team, this is their team for a long time because, right. Oof. Until they break it up, until they just say, yeah, and even then, the pick situation is so yeah. bad. Yeah. It's so bad. That is a bleak. Well, I, and, and it, it, it almost, it, it feels like the end of the road, sort of for them. You know, like it's mm -hmm. got, it's got kind of a real um, end of empire feeling <laughs> for them, where it's like, this is going to be bad, and it's going to be bad for a long time, man. Like this is going to be, this is going to be like best case scenario. You're as competitive as the Nets have been yeah. recently where, where you just, yeah, you're compromised for a long time and you're not that good. <laughs> the holiday coming to Boston is, it was, was the absolute killer for them because it's the one thing you just said it. We've been saying it for a while. The Celtics are so good at 
killing you when you have a weakness. They they will pick at that over and over and over and over again. It's just impossible to to account for that because anybody you cannot hide him anywhere. In another series, you can game plan. You can be like, okay, we're gonna hide Lillard on this non shooter. We're gonna hide Lillard somewhere. And you cannot. Who, do you, who are you gonna put him on? You can't put him on when they're fully healthy. You're going, you know, matchup for matchup. You can't hide him on the big. Porzingis is not gonna. That's not gonna go well. You can't hide him on. It's any, not gonna go well if it's Horford. Like either right. of those guys. Like yeah. It's just there's nowhere to hide, and that's their biggest problem. Like they. They can sit there and they might have been able to justify it like, hey, holiday is going to go out west and, you know, that's fine. You know, we're willing to move holiday because he went to the Blazers. Um, but going to the Celtics and giving Boston an unassailable lineup, that's 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 a killer. I, and I mean, I, it probably speaks to why you don't let your superstar run your team. Right. Cause it's like mm. that day, uh, like Giannis wanted to play with Dame, you know, the, the coaching situation, like, you know, that, that went South. That's bad. There's a series of really bad decisions. Not good. Yeah. Series of really bad decisions there. Um, so we'll just leave that there. The Celtics. Uh, Drew's awesome. That's our big Celtics takeaway. Yeah. Drew, that guy's Drew's great. awesome. Oh my gosh. And the best corner three point shooter in the game. And part of why the Celtics continue to put up 50 plus three point attempts. 50 again against Milwaukee. And people are going to be like, wow, 53s and 36 twos. Why? Okay. The one stat that explains it answers why completely when we come back. Today's show is brought to you by Mint Mobile with big wireless providers. What you see is what you get. Somewhere between the store and your first month's bill, the price you thought you were paying magically skyrockets. With Mint Mobile, you'll never have to worry about gotchas ever again. When Mint Mobile says $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan, they mean it. Say bye bye to overpriced wireless plans, jaw-dropping monthly bills, and unexpected overages. Mint Mobile is here to rescue you with premium wireless plans starting at 15 bucks a month. All plans come with high-speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan. Bring your phone number over and all of your existing contacts. Ditch overpriced wireless with Mint Mobile's deals and get three months of premium wireless service for 15 bucks a month. To get this new customer offer, your new three-month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash LockedOnNBA. That's mintmobile.com slash LockedOnNBA. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash LockedOnNBA. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 a month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Speed slower above 40 GB on an unlimited plan. That's gigabytes. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Make sure you're subscribed to the new Locked On Celtics newsletter. Go to LockedOnDaily.com and get one-stop shopping there for ultimate team and league coverage delivered right to your inbox. Sign up for free. LockedOnDaily.com. Start your day with the all-new free Locked On Celtics newsletter. So the Boston Celtics are... Uh, the most, the highest volume three-point shooting team right now. Their percentages, not so great, just kind of above average, kind of like, I, I actually, I didn't check just now, but uh, last I checked, they were 13th. They probably a little bit better now, 10th, 11th, 12th, I'm going to guess, but middle of the pack, right? Not, no great shakes, but because they are shooting the greatest volume, they are hitting the most three-pointer. 11th. 11th. Oh, I was right there. Okay. 11th. So. Uh, because they shot 38%, which is just above average current, current league average is like 36. So, um, you know, so the Celtics are an above slightly above average shooting team right now. That includes Sam Hauser kind of shooting like crap. <laughs> um, Jalen Brown, not shooting great. Jason Tatum started hot, but kind of leveled off a little bit. So there's, there's room for improvement, but by volume, they are number one. And that means the, makes are more than anybody else. Uh, and so 
well, first of all, before I get to the stats, this is this is Joe Missoula's theory, right? Like you got to keep shooting the open shots. You got to keep shooting these because if you're not hitting percentage wise, the volume can make up for the difference. The Celtics shot 50, the Bucks shot 32. You'd be like, the Bucks shot 40 and a half percent from three. The Celtics shot 38 percent. So the Bucks outshot the Celtics. But no, the Celtics scored uh, 18 more points at the three point line because they took so many. And that helps make up a lot of the difference. Now, the Celtics also got to the line a ton. But why do they shoot so many three pointers? I. <laughs> It's the it's the biggest topic of conversation. I saw Shaq talking about, oh, the three-pointers ruining the game, and everybody's saying it. Adam Taylor, who had been doing stuff for uh, Celtics Block, he's doing some stuff on his own now, uh, a great follow on the socials, put out this stat on Blue Sky. What's what's the what's the word for what you post on Blue Sky? Um, we we talked about this. We could say you skied it. Skied it. You had Blue one it. that, yeah, you know, you. Mm. Like, I mean, you you bis like you know, how, like you know how they have like that. It's like B S K Y. You you biscuit yeah. it. You you biscuited, you biscuited. it. He biscuited. He put out a biscuit. Put out a biscuit. I like yeah. it. We'll, we'll we'll workshop that. <laughs> the Celtics have taken. We've got a lot of practice with workshopping. Coming up with all the Tom puns. I think we can come up with something. We can come up with something. Yeah, we yeah. can come up with something. Yeah. Celtics have taken 564 three-pointers so far this season. It's a lot of three-pointers. 470 of them have come either open or wide open. So that means 83.3% of Boston's three-pointers have come with a defender at least four feet away. So the Celtics are getting, uh, they're shooting a ton, but 83.3% of them are open or wide open. That means 94 of them have been contested. Over 11 games, that means eight and a half per game have been contested, which is not a lot. They're averaging 52 or so per game. So eight and a half of those are contested. Some of those are, you know, chalk it up a couple of heat checks. So a couple of heat checks, uh, a couple of tough shots. Guys take tough shots in the NBA. Good shooters take contested shots. Um, so that's going to happen. And then chalk up a couple of bad ones, right? Every, every, no one's going to take perfect shots. So sure. Chalk, chalk up a couple of heaves, chalk up yeah. a couple of end of the shot clock shots. Like right. that happens a few times a game. Yeah. So, so you're going to get, so eight and a half contested shots from three per game to me is a number. Uh, I'm a hundred percent living with that Yeah, because it, it doesn't, it, it just means like you're, you're going to get that many per game, everybody's shooting eight to 10. If you're getting that kind of volume up, everybody's shooting a few contested three pointers. The fact that 83.3% of those are so wide open, that tells me like this offense is humming. They are taking, they're not jacking three pointers. They're taking the good ones. And right now, all the good ones are just there are just so many good ones because their offense is clicking. Yeah. I even thought in yesterday's game that there were some that they did get a little bit three point happy for a stretch. There were some of those threes. It was like, yeah, I feel like you could have worked that around and gotten a very similar shot. But even in that instance, a lot of those looks were pretty open. Like they that's the whole thing with this team. That that's the point that we beat to death every single every single game. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say because you 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 mentioned that and I'm like it popped into my head. How many of these contested three pointers came at the end of that first Knicks game when they were going for the three point record? How many of those were just like, can you just throw out because that was garbage time? I wonder what the what the garbage time contested three pointers are. Anyway, yeah, continue yeah. Point. If we could, if, if cleaning the glass could get on, uh, like uh, open versus yeah, that would be yeah. awesome. Um, but yeah, no, like I, I think. And, and that's that's what we keep coming back to and coming back to with this team, right? Is anytime somebody's like, oh, they're taking too many threes, they're taking too many threes. It's like, no, they're not. These are the best shots that are available to them. I think that's that's why Joe Mazzulla gets so antsy when people say like, well, you guys obviously focus a lot on shooting threes. And he, he always counters that with like, no, we focus on getting the best shot that we can that's get. Right. If that shot was a layup, they would, yeah, sure. Like if you want to just 
open the Red Sea and let them run right to the lane and, and shoot layups. They'll do that instead. That's fine. But like, that's not what they, they, they generate threes. They generate smart, good looks. And, you know, they make more than enough of them for them to be incredibly productive. That's, you know, like, yeah, they're, they're, they're 11th, uh, you know, they're, they're first in attempts by 10, I believe. Uh, if I, if I saw that right. Oh no. So they're first in attempts by 10, uh, against any of the real teams, the bulls and the Hornets both, uh, are, are a little bit less than that, but, um, you know, first in, in attempts by, by 10, they are at 36.2%. That's, that's so productive that like your true shooting percentage is going to be really good at that number. So like, I don't know, it, it, like the, the, I guess I, I really start to take issue when you think of this team, when people talk about this team in the same way that they talk about like the Rockets, you know, back like yeah. that, that is just, it's so not that <laughs> like it's, yeah. it, it is a very different type of offense, a very different um, roster construction, a very different everything. It's, it's, these are just the best shots that they get and they're really good. They, they are, uh, if, if you took out the shot, right, if you showed somebody all of the ball movement and took out the shot, people would be like, wow, this is incredible. I guarantee you people would just sit there and watch and say, this is just incredible basketball. These guys are playing great. Look at the ball movement. Look at all the passing. If you just took out like the last thing that said this is a three-pointer, people would be like, see, this is what I'm talking about. Move the ball, move the ball. Yeah, all of these end up in threes. This is just how it goes. Because it's holiday. They had that one play that they highlighted during the game, too. Uh, holiday starts down low in the dunker spot. Yeah. And on the drive, he just slowly flares out and, and gets that, that pass. And all of a sudden, these guys are just, you know, you, you move. The defender's like, where'd where he go? He's like, no, he's out there. There was the play where Tatum hit the three where he gave the kiss at the end of the game. Giannis is covering Tatum, and Tatum's in the deep corner. And I, I forget who drove, maybe Derek White. And as Giannis made a bad decision because he lost sight of his man, as soon as Tatum saw the back of Giannis's head, he he relocated up to right before the break. And the kick out, first of all, gives his driver a beautiful passing lane so he can see um, and get the pass. And Giannis is like, he turns and is like, oh, that's my guy. And that initial, he was here and now he's here. The Celtics are not only driving and kicking, the shooters relocate perfectly. They know where to be. Everybody moves on a string. It is fantastic offense and if you're going to take issue with the Celtics taking all of these open to wide open three pointers then there's no helping you because this is actually the best possible offense you can run yeah for sure also um all that relocating that is it, it's it's really interesting because it's like you see the stars doing it too that relocation thing is the thing that sh that a good sharpshooter does it's like yeah. You just have a like like Sam Hauser, you see him do it all the time, right? All the time. You, just, you have this knack for it where it's like you see things happening in front of you and you're just kind of like, I'm going to just do it. And then yep. you, like, you know, that like three steps to your left or three steps to your right. Your guy is so lost when he turns yeah. back around and you got a wide open look. And that's it. It's really sick. And that's a, that's the other thing about this, right? It's like the Celtics are playing. It's It's beautiful basketball. But it is pretty simple basketball. Like it yes. is, it is drive and it is kick and it is move. It is unselfish, and and that's what makes it so good. Is that it's not it's not anything complicated. They're not running like you know like they're not running the most you know insane stuff. It's just it's just good principled smart basketball done simply. The Celtics really cool to watch. Don't run a ton of plays. They don't run plays. They they yeah, run yeah. a set. So it's it's. They run a set. I would call it a set before I call it a play. They set up like every once in a while is set up like in a, you know, a horn set or like they, they, the, the snap where you get the back yeah. screen for the screener and that like the stuff that, you, you know, they, they run those things. But like after that initial action, it's just reading, reading just reading everything yep. and the continuity, 
These guys are all so good and so smart. They all just know. They know where they're supposed to be. Their teammates know where they're going to be. Um, and and it's just it's it's incredible to watch. It is incredible to watch. The relocation stuff is so great because if if I pass the ball to you and the defender knows it's coming and he can get that running start, that's going to run you off the line. But if a defender turns and has to find you first, that's the difference between you getting a shot off and not getting a shot off. And that that right there, playoff time, that's gonna, that's a huge thing. So I kind of don't want to hear anything about the Celtics offense again, but it's going to happen because there's a big backlash against three-pointers. Well, People, if they go cold in one game and lose it, everybody's gonna everybody's gonna lose their minds about it's it. It's gonna yeah. happen. Yeah, yeah, but that but that's gonna happen. Like yeah. it, that's gonna happen to anybody. Like people go cold. Like every team's gonna go cold once yeah. and lose. And like that you win more than you lose. Whatever. Um, I know there's a big backlash against three pointers. I feel like people are looking at the numbers and not the game. And if you look at the at least the Celtics, the, I have I've not had a single qualm. Minus like two little spots, end of the Knicks game. Uh, it was a couple games later, they got a little three happy, like a couple of the step backs, like we, we mentioned, but little spots where I was like, okay, this is this is a little three happy here. Okay, course correct, no problem. Celtics offense has been fine. Jason Tatum may not be fine. Al Horford may not be fine as they play the Atlanta Hawks. The Emirates Cup begins on the new fancy Celtics court. We'll talk about that when we come back. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL, the NBA, whatever sport you want there at FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers, all you got to do is bet five bucks and win. You'll get $150 in bonus bets. This FanDuel sports book app gives you everything you need in one place to place live bets on the NFL, the NBA, all in one place. You could have bet the Celtics. They were underdogs. After the 6-2 run against Milwaukee, you could have placed that $5 bet there. You would have won it. You would have got your $150 in bonus bets. It's all right there on the same page where the stats and the play-by-play -play are. You can place your bets on the same page. Visit FanDuel.com to join today. Use the tools that they have. Make sure you're gambling responsibly. Set your limits. Set your budget. Whatever your disposable income is, if it's $10, if it's $50, whatever it is, that's your limit. Please set that so you can have fun at FanDuel.com and you can get started with those $150 in bonus bets by winning your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Check out Locked On NBA, too. We got Locked On NBA Game, game Night and Locked On NBA, two podcasts now. So... The afternoon one is kind of like a debatey show type of thing. And at night, we've got the, the league covered. We, we talk about all the games. I'm hosting that with uh, Jake Madison on Fridays. So check out that Lockdown NBA feed, the Lockdown NBA YouTube page, and uh, have some fun with this. It's a great way to uh, keep up with the league. All right, let's uh, get to the Emirates Cup where uh, the Celtics and Hawks kick off their uh, the pool play. I got to get the terminology right. Uh, injury report makes this a very heavily Celtics uh, favorite. Uh, Trey Young is out. Uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich is out. DeAndre Hunter is out. Uh, a lot of people are, are out for Atlanta, so they're not looking good. But the Celtics, Al Horford, questionable. Uh, Jason Tatum, questionable with the ankle sprain. Um, but Jalen Brown will be there. Uh, Luke Cornett will be there. So, uh, I said at the top, I hope Jason Tatum misses the game and I hope the NBA asks the Celtics, Hey, what are you, it was ankle. Was his ankle that bad that he had to miss this, this big tournament game. It's it's up to us and be like, yeah, Adam silver. He did have to miss it because your official was looking right at the play and blew a call where our star got hurt. And now he's missing an Emirate cup game. So that's on you and that's on your officials. What are you going to do about it? That's how I hope it happens. I don't think Brad Stevens is going to do that, but man, in my head, that would be a fun conversation. Yeah, no, I mean, it would be very justified. Uh, that was egregious. Uh, that, that, was, that was a really bad missed call. That's the worst missed call. 
it's uh, it, it's about as bad as it as, as it i mean without without any like you know without any i don't want to say i don't want to say real damage because i mean ankle tweak doesn't feel good but like without any like you know major long-term damage that's about as bad as a missed call sure can get because it was it was dangerous and everything else um yeah i mean i i think that would be that would be well justified i think uh and i think you know if you're the celtics you look at that emirates cup and obviously you know like Individual players, especially guys who might not be on the biggest contracts in the world, um, you know, would, would really like to see them win it. But, you know, it's like you try to win all the games that are in front of you. You try to you try <laughs> to go as far as you can. But at the same time, you know, if, if it comes down to, hey, do we do we rest Jason Tatum or do we, you know, yeah, like the, the, the Emirates Cup isn't <laughs> it's isn't not right. Probably the end goal here. <laughs> probably not the banner uh, they're trying to raise. Right. Um, and also it's a back to back. They're playing Brooklyn on yeah. Wednesday. So this is like this is this is the real yeah. important part. Brooklyn is a tough team. they they might not end up with a great record. We just saw how that went with the Celtics. So going to Brooklyn, uh, you know you're gonna have to play play well to beat them, and they don't get blown out very often. So that's gonna be the tougher of the two games, considering how many people are out for Atlanta. Um, and you say, Hey, look, let J Jalen Brown cook. He, you know, can handle things without Jason. Yeah. Um, let, let Derek white cook. Derek let's, white let's, cook. See let it, Pritchard cook. Get, that guy, get, get Derek white, like 30 points, get those, get those yeah. stats up a little bit. Let him, let him make his case for that third all-star spot. And keep in mind point differential matters. So right. these guys, you know, if they're up 25 in the fourth quarter, they're going to stay in there. Yeah. So let them pile up their points. This is going to be like, the, the minutes distribution is going to be a little weird, but yeah, let Holiday, let Derek White, let those guys, let them cook. Um, Kata, Cornette, yeah. you know, till, let, let all of those guys give everybody an opportunity to to get some of that, um, get some of that shine because they're gonna have they're gonna have to run plenty of offense to pile up the points. So win by forty, win by fifty. I'd rather when the opportunity is there, if the opportunity presents itself because you know everybody's out team might relax and it might not be a 30 point game but if it is a 30 point game i'd rather have it be like well we've already got our 60 point blowout and we've got the point differential locked up so later on we don't have to hack andre drummond in right. the fourth quarter right. and have to do stupid things to pile up the points if you feel like Oh, the Celtics have the point differential locked up unless somebody wins by 50. Uh, then then the craziness doesn't have to ensue. Take advantage of the opportunity to to do that now. But yeah, do, do your homework early. Then you go and then you don't have to do it. Uh, then you right. get, uh, very yeah. simple. Very yeah. simple. For sure. Um, so yeah, I'm not I, too worried about Hawks. My only big Emirates Cup take, or not even take so much, is like I, I do think it would be funny if the Celtics won it. Just to like, because the NBA wants them, everybody to take this like really super yes. seriously. And it's like, if the Celtics had to raise an Emirates Cup banner yeah. after raising an actual banner that they really cared about, yeah. I would, I just think that would be a very funny dynamic of like, just like, hey, yeah, we did it. Like, so, <laughs> let me ask you this. Where would they put it? Because the league will make them do it. They will. They will. The Lakers had to do it. They're going to have to do it yeah. if they win it. Yeah. That's a reason think, to lose, if you ask me. Like that's. <laughs> yeah, I told people like, don't clown the Lakers for having to put up a banner. Like, don't clown them because the Celtics. Like, everybody's gonna have to do it. Oh yeah, I think it goes up on the other side of the arena, next to like the Bean Pot Championships and like those types yeah. of things. Like, it's gotta. Yeah, it's not gonna be next to like the retired numbers or anything like that. It's going to be 86 championship, 2024 in season two. Like, no, it's not going there. <laughs> no, it's not going there. I feel like it's going to be a, it's going to be like, it really will be like the, uh, the, the bean pot. Yeah. And it's yeah. just going to say Emirates cup. It's going to be full blank. And it's going to have like a year 2024. And then it's going to be blank for however, other, like we plan on winning more here yeah. it is, yeah. but it's, we're going to put the banner up like the league says, and uh, you know, 
but we're going to put it somewhere where it's not around the real stuff. Like that's that to me, I think was going to be, and it'll be like a, a cool little, like middle finger to the, the like, you're going to make us celebrate this. All right. Well, here's here. Banners up. What do you want us to do? There was no room on this side. We're making room for the 2025 championship banner. Banner's a wild move for this man, for this in season. I get, they want to legitimize it and everything, but like you legitimized it with the money. The money did it. Yeah. Like everybody's going to try because of the money. You didn't need. The winners are going to get the champagne shower. They're going to yes. do all that stuff again. Um, so that's going to be, I mean, that's fine. That's fine. Hey, <laughs> don't have to give me an excuse to dump champagne over somebody's head. I'll, sure, I'll go do yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, whatever. That's fine. I'll, I'll go to Vegas. Players and, are all uh, take a trip to Vegas mid season. Yeah. It's, yeah. Why nice, not? Like you get nice to go to Vegas. Thing. Yeah. I'll be there. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous stuff. All right. I would love for people to get into the comment section. And tell me where. Knowing that the banner has to go up, you can't be like, "We're not doing it. We refuse." No, it has to go up. Where would you put it? Restaurant. Uh, to the rest. <laughs> Out on the concourse. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, Tom. Appreciate yeah. you, man. Appreciate you. Always appreciate you, the listener, the watcher here for this journey. Thank you so much for uh, subscribing. If you're not a subscriber yet. Please subscribe so you can get this directly to your device. Whenever I publish, it gets directly to your device. Also, Locked On Celtics Postcast. It's an immediate post-game reaction show hosted by Steve Lennox. While I'm doing my beat writing job, he's giving you a post-game reaction. The audio joins this feed. It's separately, you know, you can tell the difference between the two. And it's on Locked On Sports Boston, that YouTube page. This show only exists. It's the only one on the Locked On Celtics YouTube page. So that's that is going to be untouched. So hop on there, get into the comment section, share your opinions with your fellow Celtics fans, and then share the podcast. I would really love it if you told your friends and told your family when you get together for the holidays, like, you know what's a cool podcast that you should be listening to and watching? The Lockdown Celtics podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.